It's starting to get hotter outside, and many people live by that philosophy. Sun's out, bun's out. This is a high time for us believers to be on guard. So in this video, we're going to talk about sexual temptation and defeating the sexual thoughts. Check out this video. Praise God and greetings to all of you, brothers and sisters out there in the digital world. Welcome to Digital Disciple Ministries. You're now tuning in to Discipleship Daily. This is a devotion series that I've been putting together by the grace of God, and we've been talking about various topics every single day. Recently, I started a series called sword of the spirit. And we're talking about the power of God's word. We're talking about how we can use the word of God to defeat fear, to defeat the doubt, doubt of God's word in our lives, and to overcome these thoughts that the enemy would whisper into our minds. We need the sword of the spirit for that. In this particular video, I want to talk about defeating sexual lust. And I'm going to give five scripture verses that help that will help you to overcome lust. Five weapons that you can draw to fight lustful thoughts. And we're going to get into it. Lust is such an ugly thing. And I'm going to do a separate video on this. This video right here, the five verses on how to defeat lust and sexual, specifically sexual lust, is for the Discipleship Daily series, Sword of the Spirit. But I'm going to do another video that elaborates and really sets the foundation of what lust is. And I'm going to talk about that and I'm going to get into the nitty gritty of it. So make sure that you watch for that, make sure that you've got that bell uh, clicked with all the notifications so that you'll get notified when I upload that video or I might I might do a live video. I'm not sure yet how, but I'm going to do that really, really soon, like probably tomorrow. And we're going to talk about some stuff that needs to be addressed. We're going to get real with it because this is the time we need to gird up and really be on our P's and Q's. The devil is really out here like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And we need to have our swords ready. So let's get into the first verse, defeating sexual lust. Now, there's other kinds of lust. It doesn't just specifically mean sexual lust, but sexual lust is a kind of lust. A lot of times when we hear the word lust, we automatically think sexual that's not the case. You can lust after chocolate and it'd be a bona fide, genuine lust. But in this video, we're going to talk specifically about sexual lust. Pornography is a big issue in the church. It's a big issue in the world, but it's a silent killer of both our men and women. Pornography is devastating. And it feeds off of sexual lust. So we're going to talk about it. Verse number one, you find in Matthew chapter five, verse 28. And as is custom for me to do, I'm going to be reading from the King James version of the Bible, but you can follow along with whatever version you have or whatever version you're comfortable with. Praise God. So Matthew Verse uh, chapter five, verse 28. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. This verse, when you're struggling with sexual temptation, whether you're struggling with looking at a woman or whether 
sisters, you're struggling with looking at a man or for those that God has delivered from homosexuality and the enemy tries to tempt you and you have a same sex attraction, whatever your attraction is, when you feel the urge or the desire or the temptation to look and to drink in the image that you're looking at, this is the verse. You can quickly sober up your mind with the word of God. When these thoughts start bombarding you, when these urges start coming, this is what you need, the sword of the spirit. You can't think these, ver these uh, temptations away. Jesus never thought the temptations away. When the urges come, when the thoughts come, when the temptation comes, you must unsheathe your sword. First of all, hide this in your heart so that you might not sin against God. Once you have this word hidden in your heart, you can unsheathe your sword by speaking it and declare, hey, it is written, whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. I don't want to commit adultery in my heart. I'm not looking. That goes for men and women. Either way. This is a powerful sword. This is a powerful weapon that you can use to take captive any of these sexual thoughts or temptations to look at pornography, to look at anything that resembles pornography, to look at people that are out there, people at the mall, people at Walmart, whenever the lust strikes with whatever it is, this is an excellent sword. This is the first verse. Let's go on to verse number two. And this is found in Proverbs chapter six, verse 25. This is another excellent verse to defeat sexual lust. When you're lusting sexually, when you're, when you're wanting to look, when, when you're wanting to gratify yourself. And the reason why most people want to look is so that they can build themselves up to the point of where they can go and relieve themselves. Very rarely do studies indicate or show that people just watch so they can watch. No, there's a motive behind it. You're watching for a reason. If there is a means to an end. Most people watch or engage in sexual lust or entertain lust because their hope is to achieve an end. We know what that is. So Proverbs chapter 6 verse 25 says, Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. This goes for men and women. Ladies, don't lust after him in your heart. If you like muscles, don't lust after his muscles in your heart. If you like a dad bod, don't lust after his belly. <laughs> Sounds funny, but it's a reality and we need to address it. Guys, don't lust after her beauty. Stop looking at her shape. Stop desiring her. Well, I can't tell you to stop desiring her. It's going to, desires are going to come up. Stop feeding that desire. When that little flame of a desire comes up, you don't have to go and chug logs on it and feed that fire. Cut it off. Use this word right here. Nope, it is written. I will not lust after her beauty in my heart. And I'm not going to let her entice me with her eyelids. It was eyelids back in the day. Today, it's a whole lot more. Hips and thighs and breasts and lips and all kinds of stuff going on. Skirts and lack thereof. And the same thing goes for the ladies too. Guys, we got to be careful too. So let's go on to the next verse. Verse number three for this video. This one's found in Job chapter 31, verse one. I'm telling you, you're, you're going to want to check out this video on sexual lust. I'm going to go in. I'm going to expose some stuff. So keep your eyes out for it. Speaking of eyes, Job chapter 31, verse 1. Job speaking. I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think 
upon a maid. Job was determined. I'm going to make a covenant with my eyes. Some of the guys in my men's group, we, we laugh about this and joke about this. It's not funny, but it's just how it comes out sometimes. Fellas, you know this. Now that it's getting hot, you be at Walmart. If you made a covenant with your eyes, the moment that you see something that you identify as this entices me, this has had a history of hooking me. Your eyes meet, boop, boom, bounce them eyes, make a covenant. I'm not going to let my eyes drink from that image. I'm not going to let my eyes feed on that. I'm not going to feed the desires of this flesh through my eyes. I'm going to bounce my eyes and I got a covenant. I made a deal with my eyes. I'm not going to let them have their way. And hey, scientifically speaking, the eye is a muscle or controlled by a muscle over which you can exercise control. So you can learn to shift your eyes. You know what I'm saying? Shift your eyes. You ever seen Mike Tyson in a ring dodging punches? That's how we need to be with our eyes. Ladies too. There's some dudes out there, they got muscles. If that's your thing, man, they suns out, guns out, right? For the guys, you better be careful, man, because sun's out, bun's out, all kinds of stuff. Guns and buns are coming out in this heat. My God, help me. We need to be ducking these things. You need to, your eyes need to be like Mike Tyson. They need to be ducking these punches of lust and sexual temptation. You need to be cutting. You know what I'm saying? Be swift with it. <laughs> Learn how to duck and flow. Float like a butterfly. And then whip that sword out, the sword of the spirit, and mm, put that thought to death in Jesus' name. Job 31.1. That was the second verse. The, 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 that was the third verse. Excuse me. The fourth verse we find in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. 2, 2, 2, 2. Praise God. And the scripture says, flee youthful lusts. But follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. I'm telling you, the word of God will renew your mind. It will capture those thoughts along with the feeling. Now, you might not always immediately have the feeling taken away. But the word of God will give you power to say no. It, it won't always get rid of that feeling. So don't expect that. So if you speak the word of God and that feeling doesn't go away, don't panic and think it didn't work. No, speak that word because you release power to do the right thing. Flee youthful lusts. Personalize that. Whoa. When you see something, whoa. When you're tempted to call so-and-so, to hit up so-and-so, whoa. I'm going to flee youthful lusts. I'm going to follow righteousness. It's written. Faith, charity, and peace. This is the type of mindset that we need to develop. Yo, we got to train. We got to train with that sword. We better learn how to swing that thing. Now. Now is a great time to do that. Sun's out. Gun's out. Sun's out. Bun's out. When the buns and the guns come out, that sword better come out too. In Jesus' name. I'm talking about the sword of the spirit. Glory be to God. That was verse number four. Let's go to verse number five. The last one for this video. Psalm 101 verse three. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. How many of us, because we acquiesce and we don't rebuke the thoughts and we don't check the flesh with the sword of the spirit. How many of us have these temptations and thoughts? They cleave to our mind so much so that eventually they become like hooks in our soul and we can't shake it and get rid of it. It's a terrible fight. Use the sword of the spirit. 
I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. When that temptation comes, hey, yo, check her out. Hey, yo, mm, look, the sword of the spirit. Don't care about if you're in public. If you're at Walmart and you got to go down a lonely aisle to do some warfare, you better handle your business. You better do what you need to do. If you're in a car, you better do what you need to do. If you're at work, you better take a bathroom break. Do what you do. Hallelujah. By all means, help yourself. Don't put yourself in a position to where you can be easily enticed. Well, these are five scripture verses to help defeat sexual lust, primarily dealing with pornography, because this is such a big problem. It's so easy, so convenient. It's a silent killer, an assassin in the church. And we're not taking this anymore. We're going to fight. We're going to use the sword of the spirit. I hope that this has helped you. Hey, tune into the message that I'm going to speak on sexual lust. I'm going to call it out and we're going to go into more details. You've got the weapons here to overcome it. But in the other video, we're going to understand it. And we're going to talk some deep nitty gritty. We're going to expose some things. So be sure you check that out. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And may the grace of God be with you always. We'll see you in the next video.